and welcome to Foo Bar. In today's episode, I want to show you how to grab everything we learned in the previous episodes and put it into practice using different environments and how you should write nice and clean serverless framework projects. If you're interested in watching more content about serverless, cloud computing, software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> This is the fourth video on this kind of configuration management series that I'm making during the month of October. And in the previous videos, we have talked about the problems of the configuration management and how to encrypt it. Also change the parameters from our functions whenever they change in the parameter store on the fly. In this video, I want to show you how to write nice, clean code in your serverless framework project using the things that we have learned. So this is a very practical video and let's go to the code and see how it's done. So let's get started by cloning one project, a very simple project called Hello World. We clone it in our computer. So I will leave you the link in the description box of this project. And I will clone it with a different name. I will call it M parameters test, always as very original. And then we can open it in Atom or in your text editor. Now we go to the serverless YAML and there we will clean up a little bit so it doesn't mess up. So this project is pretty simple. It has one, one Dynamo database and it has two functions and two API gateways. So we are going to modify it so then we can deploy this project in multiple environments. So the first thing we want to do is to change the name of the service just in case I have not removed it from my AWS account. And then I want to make the table name a uh, environmental variable. So for that, I will create the custom property. And there I will add something called stage, that it will be the stage I am in. It, I will have two stages, production and development. And that I will get from the serverless framework. So it's a parameter from there. And then I will create another property inside custom called settings. And that property will have to more properties inside dev and prod. So in this way, we will be able, depending on the stage, to get the custom variables we want. Now we will have an environmental variable called stage, and that's because we need it in our code, and it's the best way to get it. So this is kind of repetitive, I know, but I think it's the only way I could figure it out. So if you have a better way, leave it in the comments box below. And then I will have a variable, uh, environmental variable called uh, names Dynamo table, that is the name that it will have the Dynamo table in our AWS account. And that will be grid names and the stage, because I will have grid names dev, grid names prod. Also, I need to have it twice in order to be able to get it according to the state. Now, whenever we deploy, we, if we deploy to dev, we will have, we will create the table uh, grid names dash dev, or if we deploy to prod, we will create the table grid names dash prod. And we can use that variables from our code, our JavaScript code. I will show you in a moment how to do it. The next thing we want to do is in the provider, create another uh, property called environment. And there we will make like a uh, reference to the custom settings and the stage. So this will always ge get that for us and we can uh, get that from the code. So that whenever we put prod, emp and the name of the variable, we are um, getting the one in the right environment. So that's pretty handy. The next thing we want to do is in our uh, IAM roles, when we define the permissions for the table, we want to change whatever was there for this. This is very long, I know, but it makes it a reference to the table name. So we will have ARN, AWS, DynamoDB, then the uh, region, we get it from the, the provider from the serverless framework. Then we have table dash slash custom settings, and then self custom stage and then uh, the name. So this is making a reference depending on the stage that we are and we are getting the right name. If we are in prod, we are getting greetings names dash prod. If we are in dev, we are getting read names dash dev. It looks horrible, but after a while you get used to this type of notation. And we need to write similar thing in the name of the 
resource when we create it because we want that when we create this resource when we do the deploy for the first time and this resource is created the dynamo table then it has a different name depending if we are deploying for stage uh, dev or stage product and then we need to define the name like that that is also making a reference to the environmental variable that we have on the top so it's self custom settings and then we are referring to stage self custom stage and then the name of the environmental variable so this will return greetings names dash prod or greetings name dash dev depending on the stage we are deploying so after we have that then we can go and deploy this code and that should be everything we need to do and we will need to add sls deployed and we will put stage dev uh, by default serverless framework will deploy to dev but let's make it obvious so we can see what happens when we deploy to prod so now I will speed this up until we get the URLs and let's see what happens. So now we got the URLs. If you see there in the service information, we see the service name, we see the stage, we see the region, and then we see the stack. That's the cloud uh, formation stack name and it has the stage in the name. So it's the name of the service with the name of the stage. And then in the endpoint, we can see that it has dash dev, dash hello, dash dev was created. So we can see that the stage is there and there's in the functions that is the service name dash the stage dash the name of the function if we go to dynamo we can see that one table was created not two because we have deployed only dev so we can see that we have the grid names dev uh, table there we don't have the prod yet so now if we want to get the deployment to production we just run sls deploy dash slash stage prod and that will deploy to production. It will create also a stack in CloudFormation called the service name dash prod, and it will create all the different resources name correctly. So I will speed this up until we get to service information and we can take a look. So now we are in the service information. Our stack has been deployed and we can see the service name is the same. Then the stage is prod. The region is the same. We could have different regions for different stages that's totally possible we just do it in an environmental variable and it should not be a problem then we have the stack the you can see there that we have the stack name is the service name and then dash prod we have different stacks for different uh, stages so that's how serverless framework will do it then we have the endpoint there is slash prod hello so in this case serverless framework is not using the stages in the api gateway it's just creating new endpoints all the way and also with the functions is creating uh, two functions with the service name, the stage, and then the name of the function. So now let's go to back to Dynamo. We can see we have two tables, one prod and one dev. So now let's add some parameters into our uh, AWS account. We will add one parameter that it will be dev in the stage dev with the name value one and the value ah, and then we will add another parameter this time in prod also with the name value one and the value be, 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 be. in order for this uh, i will install midi as we saw in the previous video so we can update these parameters on the fly and that's pretty cool so i will do the same things that we have done in the previous video i will put midi a require and then i will um, modify a little bit the code in order for this to work. So we create a variable there for the table and I will replace the table name in the in the code. I should have done this before because if I would have tested the, the code, it would have not worked in the previous deploys, but well. So now I'm applying the MIDI um, and for that we need to basically create a variable called uh, hello, that is the handler and then put inside the business logic and there we will after apply the the middleware so i want to change a little bit our business logic so we can see if we are getting the value one when we call this handler so when we call the handler hello i want to see the value one so i will change the message that is returning the response to hello world at parameter so that doesn't make any sense but it's just for testing i will remove the old uh, module exports and modify it accordingly the meeting documentation basically uh, 
putting uh, MIDI and then the object we just created, the hello object, that is the whole business logic. And then we will use the SSM middleware with the parameters that it will uh, have a cache and it will expire in one minute. And we will use the context of the Lambda function. And there we define the names of the parameters. And if you see, there will be value one and then the name of the of the parameter in there and the stage is a variable. So that will change if it's prod or dev. So we should see different things whenever we run this code in the different stages. So now we do a similar change to what's greeted. We just put it on in an object and then we uh, apply the MIDI encapsulation. We wrap it around and we also use the value there one, but we are not using that. So it just, I don't know why I'm doing it, but well. One important thing is to give permissions to uh, MIDI to get the parameters, so we just do that. And remember to set the stage there. And we are using the pseudo parameters as we were using in the MIDI in the MIDI uh, video. So we need to install them. If you don't know what uh, pseudo parameters are, just go and check the video on that. And if you don't know what I'm talking about MIDI, also I have a video about that, so go and check it out. All the links are in the description box. So after we have set it up, I will not spend much time on setting this up because it doesn't have much mystery. I already done it in previous videos, so now I'm just deploying. This will deploy SLS deploy. It will deploy to dev because that's the automatic deploy of the serverless framework. And I will speed this up until we get to the service information and then we can go to postman with that hello url and we can see that hello world at a uh, because we are in dev so now i will do sls deploy the slash stays broad and we wait a little bit and i speed this up and then when we get the url we just test it in postman and we get hello world at bb and as we are using MIDI, if we change the values, it will just change after one minute. So this is pretty, pretty cool. In the next video, we will see how to do this uh, with an automated pipeline. So I think this will wrap up everything very nicely. All the code is available in GitHub and the links are in the description box. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or whatever, just leave them in the comment box below. I like making videos that you like watching. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and let me know that you like my series. Around here, as always, there are other videos from my channel for you to watch, so go ahead and click. And if not, I'll see you in the next episode of FUBAR. Ciao, ciao!